Hello and welcome to video six in Good Cut, Bad Cut, which is an ongoing series that looks at the art of editing in different films. I have my other videos on this channel, so you're welcome to check those out when you have time. This is a special video because I have a special guest. Recently, I made him sit down and watch with me uh, the 1958 uh, Alfred Hitchcock film Vertigo, which is in this four pack with Psycho, the Trouble with Harry and The Man Who Knew Too Much. And it's uh, actually a part of this larger series called uh, Alfred Hitchcock, The Masterpiece Collection. We are discussing the movie Vertigo, edited by George Tomasini, who also worked on nine other films for Hitchcock. We have a businessman that hires a retired detective, played by James Stewart, to pretty much um, follow his wife around and he's concerned about her mental stability. Plot takes a lot of different turns. You'll probably get vertigo just watching the movie. Um, he eventually falls in love with her in this story and it becomes rather complicated. So we'll leave it at that for now. Out of Hitchcock's films, uh, this is by far my, my my favorite of his works and uh, I've even for a while claimed it as my favorite film of all time. I really like it and I'm just excited to talk about um, the good cuts and the bad cuts in today's video. So this is the portion of the video where we talk about our honorable mentions for good cut and if you want to start first. My runner up is the scene where Scotty goes to see um, Gavin Elster. The reason I like the way this scene has been edited is it's kind of like a dance between the two of them. That it starts off with Scotty standing up, Gavin is sitting at his desk. Scotty comes in, in the beginning like kind of like he's in charge and then the scene kind of transitions to Gavin kind of having the upper hand in the conversation. Scotty sits down, Gavin stands up, so by the end of this scene, they end up talking, standing face to face on the same level. They've kind of like neutralized each other's positions. That's why I, I love this one. So it's uh, kind of shifting uh, dynamics and power. It's a shifting dynamics. It's kind of like a very orchestrated dance, which I loved. And for honorable mention for me, um, I really like how this film creates this otherworldly atmosphere through the use of a lot of uh, dissolves. Traditionally, when you use dissolves in a film, it's to convey kind of a significant uh, lapse in time. So when there's these moments in Vertigo where a character just uh, walks a short distance, it's jarring and almost like doesn't make sense, but I really like that effect in Vertigo because it does create that, that dream-like uh, state that adds to the overall ambiance and aura and, and really just like the power of this film. This is the bad cut portion of the video where we talk about those moments in the film that we weren't the biggest fans of. There were several in this movie that made my lip quiver and my brow go down a bit. But the one I'll focus on is when Scotty is following Madeline driving back to his apartment to leave a note. So they cut twice to this close-up of him with his hands on the steering wheel and is giving this very strange expression like either I'm running out of gas or I don't know where I'm going or what street I'm on or I'm gonna lose her. That doesn't seem in character. To me, it just took me out of that moment and it just seemed a very strange cut to go to twice. As an editor, you would not have put those particular takes of Jimmy Stewart's expression like at those moments. In well, maybe or, or remove them all completely. Yeah, I probably would have pulled them out, or I would have done more of a just a regular scene of him following intensely. But the, his expressions were just, to me, were just kind of bizarre. There are those shots where you're wondering, yeah, what is what is the meaning behind this? And for me, uh, one of those moments uh, takes place uh, along Sky's journey when he is tailing um, Madeline inside a hotel and. There's a moment where he's by himself in the hotel lobby and he looks up and sees a torchier. Um, I don't know if it's that or a chandelier, but um, there's this moment where he just kind of is staring at this, this object uh, that to me just really ha carries no greater significance. I see Hitchcock as a, a man who makes very little mistakes. He's such a m meticulous filmmaker, so why he would include this moment. And those are our, our bad cuts of Vertigo.
So this is the moment you've all been waiting for, the good cut portion. So these are from kind of an editorial standpoint, like our favorite moments. Have you take it away? Okay, so my number one pick would be where Scotty and Madeline go to the Redwood Forest. They're like entering this darkness of the trees. I also like where they edit, he finds her behind the tree. This is the first time in the movie for me that he is starting to ask her some tough questions. She starts to really evade him and look for ways out. And her way out of this moment to me was that she says, Somewhere in the light. We fade away from the Redwood Forest. Then we open up right after that into the beach. So once again, Hitchcock is doing this light and dark. Theme. And then what I liked about the edit of this scene was that she takes off again running towards the water. The audience is almost thinking, is she going to jump in again? She's having to think really quick on her feet and she doesn't have good answers so she's, she's running again. She's running. Mm -hmm. So that would be in my number one. Good choice. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, my my top pick for, for Good Cut is he is taking a moment in his car to look at this catalog that contains a painting of uh, Carlotta, uh, who is Madeline's great-grandmother. And superimposed over that is a shot of Scotty's first time that he, he saw uh, Madeline. It sums up really nicely this growing attraction that he has. He's associating this beautiful woman's portrait with with Madeline and his idea of, of past and present and living and dead, it's all kind of getting confused and jumbled in his mind. So he's getting emotionally uh, uh, attached. He's getting too close to his, his lead. That he's right, following. and also what's interesting about that is, isn't he looking at that catalog when it's dark outside? Mm -hmm. He's also handed that catalog in the dark by the guard or whoever's in the museum. Right. And remember, she's sitting in the light. Yeah. So it's very interesting how Hitchcock uses that light and dark contrast through the whole movie. I enjoy it so much because it's one of those films that every time I watch it, it, it seems to open up new new ways of, of thinking about the film for me. It's rare to find a film where you can enjoy it over and over again every time for different reasons. I would recommend it. Uh, so if you haven't seen it yet, definitely uh, check it out. The musical score is outstanding for this movie. I think that yeah. helps a lot with yeah. the whole mystery and the tenseness of it. And, and the, the romanticism of it. The pace of the movie. I think it's a good movie by Hitchcock. I would not say it's one of his best for me. I find some flaws here and there in the plot line yeah. and the continuity of it. I hope you don't get vertigo watching it. I would give it in his top five, but I would not put it at number one for me. But I enjoyed it. All right. So thank you. And thank you for, again, watching this video of Good Cut, Bad Cut. Give your, your thoughts on this video and on uh, Hitchcock's Vertigo uh, in the comments below. I have some other thoughts about the film uh, in the description box below, so feel free to check that out. In our next video, I'll be wearing a new shirt, so count on that. And we'll be discussing the movie... Yes? And I just leave it. No, I, I cut to it. <laughs>